Hey everyone. Alright, I'm going to do the uh, next episode of my Dark Souls 1 playthrough. We looked at Firelink Shrine. And now we are going to uh, go through and try to. Oh, I always get that one wrong. We're going to try to get through Undead Work. That was the oldest trick in the book. What was I thinking? So, it's interesting to see a couple different uh, undead beings right now. There's standard hollows and then there's these kind of like knights. suppose that, and this is called Lordran, it's not Anorlando, like Anorlando is a city inside of Lordran. Um, and so Lordran is like a region or whatever, uh, so this is probably just the, um, you know, the knights and the, and the residents of this area. So we get the Ring of Sacrifice over here, which is, you know, ironic or coincidental or whatever that it's in a perilous place um, that you could easily die jumping over there and jumping back. But this mystical ring was created in a sacrificial rite of Velka, the goddess of sin. Its wearer will lose nothing upon death, but the ring breaks. This is our introduction to Velka. The goddess of sin, which, you know, that sounds like a oxymoron. And it was created in a sacrificial rite. As if, you know, this, unlike other things, you know, other rings, other equipment, was created not from, you know, forging or whatever, but that it needed a special ritual in order to be created. And it certainly acts like no other rings in the game. So this is the aqueduct over here, that uh, the crestfallen warrior down there, who I think despawns at this distance, uh, has told us about. And uh, we get to see here our first uh, giant rat. Um, who typically falls through the floor. He did. So, yeah, this is huge, and um, I have a theory about, uh, you know, the sizes of beings in this game. You know, there's a lot of things that have been increased to a large size. There's not from the side, including bosses and, and many human-like things. I think it's related to souls and all that stuff, but talk about that later. There you go, just gotta repay for missing that one so much. I don't really have a decent weapon at this point, so I'm really just relying on, you know, you know, my backstabs and my parries and whatever. for it, I guess. So this is the end of Berg. You know, a lot of people have said it's the greatest game design to ever, the greatest level design to ever exist in anything ever. 
Um, so yeah, behold, I guess. to parry that with like no life left uh, there's a door over here that people tend to to miss I guess I should be looking around because I mean really that's a lot of the beauty of this um, game so um, it's kind of cool we can see undead hanging off the ledge here next to an item over there um, this and you know I guess we probably could have seen these guys from up there but I wasn't looking around but um yeah but this this kind of area is renowned for being wrapping in on, on the inside of itself and you can kind of get lost just going around or whatever Um, so yeah, we know that these guys are here. Guess we can just, you know, take them out this way. I'm no longer saving for a boss. Might as well be clever about it. There's, a, there's an undead here. Dead. A dead undead, a dead hollow. That's carrying rubbish. I wonder what that says. Oh, we didn't read Copper Coin yet. Let's read this. Well, rubbish is quick. Rubbish with no value. Who in their right mind would bother carrying this around? Perhaps you need help. I mean, just like that. I'm gonna have to drop it. Okay, coin. Copper Coin. Copper Coin of Old Man McLoif. Its face shows Old Man McLoif, god of medicine and drink. Even coins of great value in the world of men have little value in Lordran, where the accepted currency is souls. Those who dream of returning to the outside world are fond of carrying these around. So again, Petrus gave us that. I mean, it has a god on it, and um, and it has no value here, and it actually has no value here. Sometimes you read a description, and it might not be completely accurate. But that one's accurate. Um, it's interesting how, like, a god is named Old Man McLoif. I never really thought about it. But, like, men are different than gods, right? I mean, you wouldn't call a god an old man. Like, you'd call them a god. So, it's, I don't know, maybe McLoif was something before he was a god? Can't get across there quite yet. And there's a dragon. Actually a drake. That's the Hellkite drake. And, uh... Yeah, we'll be getting screwed by him later. Oops, <laughs> I forgot I didn't have my equipped. Oh, I thought this was the stairs. Um, that was weird. Can't wait till I get some actual weapons that I like to use. I'm gonna take this guy out here real quick. Oh look, he's gonna use a flask. An undead favorite, as they say. Oh look at this. Playing online. There's a 
Hand? Or, um, I forget who, what, who wears that armor. Um, yeah, let's, um, well, here, let's come grab this shield. So, a wooden shield. Wood is very important in this game. Not immense, uh, it's not like crazy or anything, but, I mean, um, this has a decent magic pr uh, protection, for example. Because wooden is tied to magic. Vertically elongated wooden shield decorated with a white dragon. Wood shields are lighter than metal shields, but with low physical damage reduction. And, and what was that? Stability, right? Um... Yeah, I think, you know, most, I mean, especially if you look around, a lot of the old ancient trees, I mean, we still have some around in this world today, are, you know, the old arch trees from from before. So, um, they are infused with magic a lot of the time. So yeah, if you try to go up this path, you'll see here that there's a, it's like a ladder and a way up there, um, but the ladder is retracted up here, which is kind of cool. Um, I'll just go over here. How are my spells going to do against these guys? There we go. Don't block them. Okay, oh, there you go. quicker or do it that way. Okay. Bunch of messages around here. Merchant ahead. Here. Where? Where? and a hollow warrior waistcloth. What the? All right. Standard battle axe affects regular damage. Doesn't say much there. Waistcloth worn by hollow warriors. It is so tattered that it basically basically doesn't serve a purpose. Um, yeah, so there's a merchant over here known simply as Undead Merchant. Um, he's a strange fellow, um, you can see him petting, uh, something invisible, um, you know, this is one of those things, I don't know if it's, uh, they just didn't implement it, or if it's meant to be that this guy's crazy, I mean, he clearly looks like he's about to go hollow, unlike, you know, the other people we've talked to, he's very far gone. Well now. You seem to have your wits about you. Hmm? Then you are a welcome customer. I trade for souls. Everything's for sale. <laughs> That's not funny. Okay, let's see what he's got. So he's got some interesting stuff. Um, let's read some of this stuff. Lightly enchanted golden powder. Repairs weapon equipped in right hand. Use of a weapon depletes its durability, eventually rendering it ineffective. Repair power is precious, precious method of repair on the battlefield, as it obviates the need for a repair box. I think he has repair box for me to buy too. It's interesting. Repair powder glows golden, as does like lightning and sunlight and light in general. Um, in Dark Souls Two, we learn about other things like. The Repair Miracle repairs things with light. So, I don't know, I think this might be an indication that Repair Powder is like light, like lightning or something. Throwing Knife. Throwing Knives have limited range, but are more accurate. Undead who lack other means of ranged attacks will do well to stop a few of these. Then we've read these. And then we have the Orange Guidance Soapstone. Message transmit, transmit to other worlds. 
In Lordran, the flow of time is distorted, and messages allow undead to assist or deceive one another. Um, yeah, it's the first time we talk about time being distorted and weird things going on there. And it won't be the last. Residence key. Key to a residence in the undead burg. S uh, simple, sturdy design. It says to a residence, but it's to quite a few uh, places. Simple, sturdy design out of the locks in the burg. Keep out unwanted visitors. But this is a standard key in these parts. <laughs> we'll open some of those. I should have read before I spoke. So apparently it's for one particular residence. And I think I know the one it's talking about, but it also works for one up here too. Then we have the repair box, specialized mortar used to repair weapons, uh, rest of the bonfire, um, blah, blah, blah. A peculiar bo bottomless wooden box. Its origins are unknown. It's also wooden. I don't know if that matters. Wooden is related with magic, but I don't think that's what it means. Some deride it as a symbol of unbridled avarice. Uh, any number of items can be deposited in the box, and items can be managed while resting in a bonfire. Cool. Scimitar. Just going to be looking for lore and stuff. Ooh, we're not at the top. Dragger, we read short sword. Okay. These don't really have a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of this stuff uh, is not uh, heavy on lore. It's just basic tools. A lot of items in the future will be, however. The Berg Undead Merchant proudly peddles this club, but its reinforcement is shoddy. Indeed, its attack is stronger, but the club is no longer dependably sturdy. Not really lore-based, but kind of an interesting story. <laughs> East-West Shield. Decorated with the ancient symbol of a double-headed eagle painted yellow. Don't know what that eagle's supposed to represent. Wood shields are lighter, blah, blah, blah. Small leather, buckler. A leather shield. A heater shield. This is nice because it is one that has, it's a small shield that offers 100% physical, although I don't need that. Um... Decor decorated with the ancient Labrys axe, these giant, the giant trees in Lordran are distant offspring of the giant great stone arch trees. This shield inherits their properties, and the wood reduces magic damage. So, it was the warrior's round shield I was meaning to find. Uh, so it's not even just that the arch trees, or the ones that made them, but the giant trees in Lordran are descendants of those arch trees in some way. It's interesting. Okay, and the arrows don't have any lore on them. Pretty sure. Um, it is common thought the human world, uh, common throughout the human world, since it can be easily produced, but is not too heavy. Knights may favor flashy armor, but for warriors on the battlefield, anything is fine as well, as long as it keeps them alive. Yeah, so not a huge source of lore here, but I'm going to buy this residence key. Right? Thank you, Cap. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to talk to him real quick. Oh, you again. I hope you've brought plenty of soul. <laughs> Things are getting treacherous in these parts. A horrible goat demon has moved in below. Huh. And up above, there's that humongous drake and a bull demon too. If you stick around this place, it might end up being your grave. <laughs> so he's telling us about the Capra demon, the Taurus demon, and the Hellkite Drake. Here, yeah, I'm not here to chit chat. We talk business or we talk nothing at all. Here, yeah, I'm not here to. Ch we talk. Okay. <sighs> what a waste of time. Go and fall off a. Um, so yeah, I want, I want his weapon, basically. So it seems like he's from the You've east. You've gone mad, have you? I'll teach you. Because he now has a rat. Uchi guitar. Yulia! Yulia! Wow. 
<laughs> I haven't really had an issue with this guy because I didn't. Why me, little Yulia? Oh. Huh. So a lot of people suspect that Yulia is his little cat that doesn't exist anymore. So you get the soapstone, and then you get this great weapon, the Chi Katana, and a piece of humanity. Maybe that was from just killing regular undead. Katana forged in the Easter land, known for its brisk slashing motion, the Uchi Katana cuts beautifully and causes bleeding, but its blade is easily nicked. And that will be my weapon of choice, if I can wield it yet. No, I need 14 strength. Can I double? Can I double? What's my strength at? Nine. Okay. Well, that will be the next thing that we level up. And I might be able to do that right now. But first, let's. Oh, no, it's done here. It's just one other thing to get. I always thought you could get on that. It looks like a certain thing you can do. I tried for hours my first playthrough. Um, so yeah, this is the area where we came up and the Hellkite Drake was there. In fact, this area up here is where the Hellkite Drake will reside, basically. Everything's really compact here. another area over there that looks like you can get to it, but you can't. So now you can jump over here, grab the uh, crossbow, which I never use, so I don't know why I did it. You get as many items, right? Get all the lore. You can see that there's undead up there standing on the roof. Huh. Um, so, this is kind of an interesting thing. Um, let me rest at the bonfire here. In fact, let me see if I can. Um, Get to my 14th strength. Let's see if I got five levels in me, I doubt it. I would love to. Alright, let's see. Hold on, I'll just get rid of this. And then let's. I don't have anything else. Okay, 2500. Come on. Uh, I don't know how double handing in this game works. Oh no, I'm over encumbered. Um, I don't like being in the mid roll. Oops. Yeah, that's good. That was almost the stupidest thing I've ever done. Alright, so one thing that's kind of interesting here, I guess I'm going to have to double wield it until... There's this guy, he has to open a door um, in order to get through. So when you first come through, you easily can get through and kill these guys before he comes in. 
Um, but subsequent times, he always comes out right away. So it's kind of an interesting little thing. So there he opens the door, but that's the only time he'll open the door. Oops. Oh gosh. That was a very handy uh, double, double attack. Kill those two guys. Another door that doesn't open. So we get some black fire bombs here. Let's see what these say. Filled with black powder. They're just a more powerful fire bomb. That slash. Let me, uh... Oops. Just save myself some headaches. Pick up some souls. So, yeah, from here you get some good views. Again, this is the uh, bridge area, which you will later go, and there's the sunlight altar and all that. And then down here is where we just crossed, and then way down there, well, there's also that item, the blue tearstone ring, and then there's the lower undead bird down there, which you can see it's all very compact in here. Makes it feel very integrated. There's a sniper up here. Let's go take him out. So he doesn't bother us. And let's see if we can. Can we get this in here? Oh, come on. So he dropped here. Howl, Schultz, Soldier, Howl. Again, this is a lore through, so we're just going to read everything. Worn by Howl, Soldier. He is wise to wear a sturdy form of head protection. Not brimming with lore. Oh, I forgot to mention that this is the one of the places where you can use the residence key. I don't think it's the main intended use. fireplace here. If they don't have a chimney, I'm gonna rage. Uninstalling this game. So, someone in this home was putting gold pine resin for some reason. I'm not really sure if that matters all that much. So this is interesting. This is a, a black a black knight. Uh, we heard in the cinema, opening cinematics about the uh, Silver Knights, and this is a uh, the same as the Silver Knights, as we'll see later, but it's charred black. These were the ones that were closest uh, to Gwyn, traveled with him to the Kiln of the First Flame, and got charred by him linking it. So now they're just all around Lordran, close to Farley Shrine, in fact. <sighs> Of course, I haven't played this in a bit. I'm probably just going to die from this, but, you know, why not try? Oh, I can't even stab him. Oh, my God. I thought you were able to repost with the, with the double. 
Huh, what am I gonna do here? Let's see how much damage we do. Oh, I panicked. I guess let's see if we can uh, That was lucky. of perspective. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to just run by all these guys. I don't think it's very productive. Just get You could be too close to them, apparently. Ugh. Yeah, I don't want to die too many times, but of course, I'm only human here. Until I get better armor and better stats, I'm gonna be, you know, looking around with this. Well, let's just do this. Okay. Get my other humanity. Soldier seal. It's a pretty decent one, actually. <sighs> Let's take a look at that, actually. Metal shield, low bar. How it soldiers? Oops. Didn't see he was coming. Come on. Let's see if we can beat this Black Knight with the uh, with a dagger. I'm gonna bring him up here so that if I die, do die, it'll be easier to get my stuff. We can just come back when I'm a little bit more leveled up. Is he following? Yes. Just very slowly. All right. Let's try this. <laughs> that should have done it. All right. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, so this is gonna take a few hits. one, I just know it. I got a chunk. It's better than nothing. Alright, let's go back to the Uchi here. And uh, I guess
guess I'm gonna keep gold pine resin. He handily kills himself. There's a door over here that if I had the master key I could get in there, but of course I don't, so we're gonna need to get that key later. Oh, well, we should read the Titanite chunk, actually. Ah, uh, there's the crystal lizard here. So another Titanite chunk and some Twilight. So we should probably have gotten a regular Titanite shard, but I guess we'll learn a bit about Titanite here. Titanite chunk for weapon reinforcement. Not found outside of Lordran. Hmm. You certainly find it in other games. Reinforces to plus 14. With the discovery of chunks in Lordran, the race to locate the legendary slabs has begun. But could they be a mere myth? Well, we certainly will get our hands on some slabs before the game's out. Uh, Titanite is imbued with a particularly powerful energy. After this Titanite was peeled from its slab, it is said that it received a special power, but its specific nature is unclear. Yeah, it's interesting. Twinkling Titanite is the exact shape of Titanite Chunk, but it's just twinkling. Never really noticed that. There's different slabs in this game. There's different colors of Titanite. There's different slabs, but there's no twinkling slab or anything. There's no twinkling Titanite shard, but that's because it's a chunk. Huh. It's interesting. Um, all right, well, let's do the Taurus here. Stamina. All right, now they won't be bothering us. So, Taurus Demon comes from up there. Again, the Taurus Demon, the Capra Demon, the Asylum Demon, the Stray Demon, the Fire Sage Demon, they're all related to the Isolith and the things that happen there. I should have put my uh, this on. Maybe I can still do it here. I can! so if I continue with the Uchi and maybe get some magic in there maybe uh, maybe I'll do a, a great magic weapon so again if we look down here we can see like that's the area over there with the bonfires and the archers and then the bridge and then people are throwing things down at us and I was always saying there's the where the arch drake will be of course, you wouldn't know that the first time you play here. You famously don't know that. And famously die. Um, which I will try not to do as well. Although I might end this recording here before I really explore that. Oh, I might have already triggered him. There he goes. Didn't even mean to do that. So anyway, that's where he sits for most of the game. Well, all of the game, but I mean, he moves. Um, but yeah, we come down here, and of course, we meet a very famous character who is just looking at Lordran and the sun. We are basically on the outskirts right here. I mean, 
I don't know if that's a great sea or if that's land with a fog on it. I don't know. But certainly interesting. But this guy has a huge sun on his <laughs> armor. Let's talk to him. Ah, hello. You don't look hollow. Far from it. I am Soler of Astora, an adherent of the Lord of Sunlight. Now that I am undead, I have come to this great land, the birthplace of Lord Gwyn, to seek my very own son. You find that strange? Well, you should. No need to hide your reaction. I get that look all the time. <laughs> okay, so this is Solaire from Astora, which is another land we're going to learn a bit more about. And he is an adherent to the Lord of Sunlight, which he explains is Lord Gwyn. Or at least I can say that what he said means that it's Lord Gwyn. And he says, now that I am undead, I have come to find my own son. So he has been recently turned dead, I guess. Uh, we don't really know exactly what's going on, but um, he, uh, he certainly, uh, oh, someone kindled a bonfire. Uh, he certainly uh, will tell us later about uh, him being undead and whatnot. Um, and he talks about finding his own son as he stares at the sun. It's quite interesting. Oh, aha. So I didn't scare you. I have a proposition, if you have a moment. Of course. The way I see it, our fates appear to be intertwined. In a land brimming with hollows, could that really be mere chance? So what do you say? Why not help one another on this lonely journey? I feel like there's got to have been some missed dialogue there. Cut content, or like literally cut. Like never appeared in the game because later he says that he became undead to pursue this goal. And he seems to indicate here that we both came from the undead asylum later. And again, it's just kind of weird that he's like, our fates appear to be intertwined. And we're like, wait, why? Why? We don't know anything about you yet. And he doesn't know anything about us. So, but yeah, our fates do appear to be intertwined and I do want to help him out. This pleases me greatly. Well then, take this. Another soapstone. We are amidst strange beings in a strange land. The flow of time itself is convoluted, with heroes centuries old phasing in and out. The very fabric wavers, and relations shift and obscure. There's no telling how much longer your world and mine will remain in contact. But use this to summon one another as spirits, cross the gaps between the worlds, and engage in jolly cooperation. Of course, we are not the only ones engaged in this, but I am a warrior of the sun. Spot my summon signature easily by its brilliant aura. If you miss it, you must be blind. <laughs> so I guess he's indicating here, so he now says that time is convoluted. And old heroes shift in and out, phase in and out. So he's talking, of course, about the fact that this is my world and I can sometimes see other beings I can communicate with them with the messages there's one below him for example weakness tears um, and <laughs> yeah weakness tears meaning the only way they could have placed that sign is if they had killed him um, but um, he's seeming to imply right now especially since we can summon him later on that he is not from our world that he is like you know as we say later he indicates to us that he is from the undead asylum and that he became undead to do this and so it, it, he's like i don't know how much longer i'm going to be in your world so that's interesting i mean i haven't really explored that idea that he's not of my world here or whatever but he gave us a soapstone the white one so this is direct messages this is to place your summon sign down be summoned to another world as a phantom. In Lordran, with the flow of time distorted and the white so sign stoke so allows them to assist one another. So, anyway, what else do you have to say? Oh, hello there. I will stay behind to gaze at the sun. The sun is a wondrous body, 
like a magnificent father. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. I love that line. Yeah, so he's looking for his own son, and he says the son is like a wondrous father. And he's searching for Lord Gwyn. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. Okay. Um, we have the uh, basement here, which we can't get to. Hellkite. Don't do me dirty, Hellkite. Thank you. Every once in a blue moon, he can yell, uh, yell his fire at us. So yeah, of course now we are, uh, we've now come full circle and we are back to, I was like, why are those undead there? But I didn't see the rest of the bonfire yet. Um, yeah, so now we have a shortcut to right where we're at and I'm going to try to take this opportunity to get to another bonfire before we end this episode. Might attempt to get the Drake sword here. Not good at getting the Drake sword. I always get confused about that move and the one that I actually want. But we're basically waiting to fall. You can just jump down here. Try to cut off his tail, but I'm not thinking that's going to turn out very well. I promise this works. <laughs> Although it doesn't seem like it would, based on his RNG here. Never waited this long for him. Okay, <laughs> we're not gonna get it. Oh, we can level up here. How great did I get invaded? No, I'm not human. Okay, there we go. I gotta rival up my strength. I might. Maybe I'll go with the Claymore too. I don't know. I really like the Claymore. I guess the enemies are too close. Alright, let's get two more strength here and then let's go with the rest of this. Use our weapon, and I'm gonna repair it, so I probably should. Can't back 
just have no scars. Huh. So anyway, this is kind of like a, a bonfire that you don't get to uh, often on normal playthroughs because the Hellkite Drake and you know new players wouldn't get to that. I mean, you can unlock this, so you can get back and forth easily. Um, and yeah, here's another statue here of the woman with another baby, and it has the uh, what we now know as the sunlight straight sword in there. So again, probably Gwyn and his mother. I mean, we are in Lordran, and uh, you know, Anne Arlando is right there. So I would think that, you know, you know, we would be in a place where they revered Gwyn as the lord of all gods. And here's another statue which is important. I cannot pray to this and I probably will not be joining this covenant because I'm probably not going to summon and do all that stuff, but you can see it's a figure that's been destroyed and he has a uh, like this, you know, spear with a certain hilt at the well it's not really a hilt because it's at the end here. I don't know the spear terminology. But his head has been ripped off and all of his body parts are lying all over the place. His feet just remain. And uh, with a lot of statues around here, it's interesting to kind of think about who this one might be of. But we're going to learn that later. So let me let me just uh, do last minute leveling up here and then we can cut this episode short. Do I have any other? Okay. I'm just gonna pop all these because you know why not? It's not like I die all the time or anything. Oops. And let's put some more into dexterity. So I'm going to be using that a lot. What's my uh, durability at? 75 out of 80. Pfft. Yeah, we're fine. We're going to go with this one. All right. Well, until next time, then.